I don't want to be disrespectful, but I think we overestimated. Like, I just looked at some of the top guys, and I'm like, man, if one day we could just beat those guys. And I didn't expect it to happen that quick in this season. Like in my races, I'll be like 30 minutes in or whatever, and if I feel like tired or I feel something's wrong, I'm like, you're so soft, dude. It's 30 minutes. Let's go controversial then. I'm gonna be that Ked Media guy now. Captain America, bro. Motocross Nation starts in like six hours, man, and uh, you're in Temecula. Shoot, dude. You called it? I actually have to hit this one on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's get into this. Yeah. Uh, just to give everyone context, we're not in the <laughs> studio at the moment. These guys, they're bouncing tomorrow. Um, we didn't have time to get in the studio, but we did want to have a chat because there's a fair bit that's gone down uh, in in old Danger's rookie season. It's pretty wild. Um, I guess we started just then talking a little bit like the logistics. You got to have like the motorhome here because of how crazy it is at the races. It's probably like a pretty good place to start. You know, it's like. <laughs> Did, when you coming into this season, rookie year, did you have any idea how gnarly the fans were going to be for you? Because I was at Washougal and it was one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. It's just like people screaming, hey, Dad, just constantly. <laughs> like you're in the truck and then they were screaming so much that you, you had to walk out the truck just to like quiet the noise a bit. Yeah, <clears throat> the fans are, it's crazy how uh, my dad and, you know, what he's done and then the YouTube channel and showing everyone from the day I literally started racing to now, like keeping everyone in tune and it almost feels like they're part of the family almost, you know, they've seen me on a 65, a 50 and now racing pro on a 250. So I think when they're at the races, they, uh, they think they're, you know, part of, you know, part of the crew. So it's like you hear them out there, they're yelling and uh, it's hard. I try to get out there as much as I can, but it's like, on race day, it's like we have one goal, and it's you know go out there and try and win. So it's like you got to get your recovery in, you got to get your food in, and it's like not we can't just go hang out outside all the time. But yeah, it's wild. Where uh, I'll be inside and I'll start hearing the chant, like people start chanting my name. I'm like, all right, man, I, I gotta go out real quick. I gotta go set this up. But uh, yeah. Did you expect it though? Like I guess you would have had to have known, obviously, that there's gonna be a lot of fans coming to the races. But did you think about it much before the races or? you were just so in the grind mode that it wasn't even something you really were thinking about. Uh, I mean, I knew there would be some a good amount of fans like just because of all the people that have supported me on the way up and watched. And then uh, I raced Futures and that, that crowd was also like pretty gnarly at Anaheim. Like this, they were just, it, everyone just like wild. They're just like yelling in the crowd. And, and then, yeah, then I saw like Outdoor Nationals. It was weird, Supercross was, uh, I feel like Supercross, the fans were a little more like loud. And then outdoors, outdoors there was like, it was, it was like, it had a fair share of both. But uh, yeah, the fans just, it's, it's made it a lot more fun having fans going crazy all the time and keeps you excited to go out there and uh, put on a show for them. Yeah, and it's just like, the, for me, when I've been around like, obviously LA and then Washougal, there's just like a vibe, you know? And uh, it's like, there's an energy that you have the other riders don't have in the same way. Like, obviously a lot of guys have fan bases, but it's just so different when, like you guys for the last 10 years have been, you know, grinding on their YouTube thing. It's like, it, it definitely hits different and you can really feel the vibe. And like, even, you know, like some of the other guys in the truck, they must just be like, what the <laughs> fuck is going they on? Like, this is it. so <laughs> ridiculous. Like, they they would have, yeah, like, I mean, they probably had no idea that there was just about to be this wave of people that would just descend on the Star Rig every weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, because I was inside, I was eating, and Bobby was talking, Bobby just sometimes <laughs> won't even let me go out there. Just, that's just, I mean, Bobby wants us to win. Bobby yeah. just, you stay focused, stay in here, which I mean, I get that. That's, uh, that's how he wants to run run the program so if I gotta stand there I gotta stand there but some of the guys would be signing they'd be like dude no one's moving like you gotta come out here so the line starts moving because like, <laughs> everyone waits in the line and they want to get an autograph and then like the line's not moving if I wasn't out there so I was like I go out there for a little bit but I'm like I can't <laughs> <laughs> nah it's a it's a super cool problem to have and just so unique in the sport you know I'm like I don't I don't even think that some of the other riders like I mean 
that those dudes aren't doing laps of the pits to see what's going down. Like, I don't think that many of the other riders that aren't around the Yamaha sort of side would even understand they see it. what's going on. <laughs> they you, see it. You think? Uh, they see the crowds, dude. Like, I, we, we notice where the crowds are. Yeah. You know, the sponsors notice, the team owners notice. That's the game, right? Who gets the attention? Isn't that the game? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, yeah. right? I, it, I just think though, I think it's like all these guys are, have their little like, cool, let's be quiet, you know, and let's only race. Yeah. Where I think we've let people yeah. into our into our life. And that's why the fans are so supportive. Yeah. And then you have your other guys that are just, let's be quiet and do our one Instagram post every here and there. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I don't know, I don't think that's cool for the fans. If you're for the sport, I feel like you wanna let them into your life and show them what you're about. And to be like, oh, I'm about the fans and not let the fans see what you're doing all the time, it just doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, yeah. and that, like, yeah, what, he, what he's saying there is, it's a lot easier to do that. It'd be yeah. a lot easier for us just to Oh, go, dude, for sure. Oh, one post, let's go do my thing. It's a lot easier for him to not even race, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. So it's uh, the end of the day, yeah, but you race because you love it, right? Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, get the fans are, are there to have their heroes in that connection i think this is the first time unless i'm maybe pastrana it was the mm. only other time a fan or an athlete came into pro racing with a pre-built fan base yeah that's very true yeah pastrana had his he was big time when he raced supercross because x games at 14. yeah yeah you know but with social media it's times 10 now yeah i mean look at all that those kids you know how many kids have come to the race and never been to a race before mm. and we're like dude this is my first race just watch your youtube i've watched you since you're on 65 or watched you know the family or you know it's it's a different thing and i don't know it's weird because i don't think racing was ready for it you mm. know and I, the team wasn't like the team owners like dude i've never seen, i've seen nothing like it dude and but then we're like well how do we not how do we give hayden his space to race yeah and focus because that's why i try to tell the fans and because of our social we've had a voice which is very powerful and that is a, you know one of the main reasons why we do it so we can put out a, our a good message yeah with all the crap that's on the internet now uh so i feel like that's how do you keep it going and giving the crowd what they want yet giving him his space so he can still win races yeah it's a balance man well i think you know? i think that's one of the cool things like we could get into it like further yeah. down the track but i mean if people want to criticize the program it's mm -hmm. like oh brian fucking can't get out of the camera like yeah. he loves it but i think that's the kind that is the barrier you yeah, know yeah. like you yeah, yeah. you kind of <laughs> are that. someone's got to just yeah, talk yeah. and he's busy dude. he's got to yeah. focus on racing right yeah and or I, we can none of us talk and you guys get nothing right yeah and i, and <laughs> I know, think sometimes that that's Hudson, the cool sometimes marisa yeah right yeah it's 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 all a system to help yeah whoever the main focus is at the time yeah. right and that system, at one point when the focus was me at X Games, right? And all the kids were doing their thing. And, and then I was like running, leading the ship. And then Haley came up and then Hayden comes up. It's just a rotating machine. Yeah. And it's so strong together. Yeah. Like, and if people start learning from it and seeing it, I think they'll yeah, and understand I think, it. Yeah, I think that's like kind of the secret sauce, you know, is like yeah. he does get to just do his thing, you yeah. know, like gets to race. And yeah, you've got to come out the truck and you've got yeah. to do your bits and pieces here and there and you got to talk to the camera a few times but like for the most part like he gets to do do his his thing but i think it's interesting what you said about wanting to be like for the sport and i think that we've had we had some opportunities like james was one yeah where he really had an opportunity to like transcend the sport yeah. and he did to a point yeah like he was on mtv cribs i don't mm -hmm. know if you remember the episode yeah, yeah and, like, he had his own reality he was show, like yeah. yeah and he was yeah had the reality deal but i think that i mean i don't know where that i guess like not went wrong but it, it didn't end up doing what maybe it could have done for the mm -hmm. sport or maybe it did but it wasn't like the sport wasn't ready but i think we definitely see guys come along and they could take the sport on their back and really elevate it. But for whatever reason, they end up going like, this is too hard. I'm yeah. just going to race. I'm just going to be the one Instagram post guy. Yeah. And, you know, maybe some of that is that you just don't have, that's not a focus going in and it's not, you haven't got a team around you that 
lets that happen, you know? But yeah. I think it's probably not since McGrath, really, that we had a guy... He was down. He was on every Today Show. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was on every, every radio. He yeah. was, you know... There's a way you can put the sport on your back and transcend. So I yeah. guess it's like, in your mind, Hayden, is that something, like, you think you can be that guy or, like, you want to be that guy that can take it to that next level? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think just literally just what we've done so far with this mm. the youtube channel and the fans we brought to the sport is already making it bigger just and it's only my first year and i feel like it's just going to go up from there you know i don't know it's kind of you got to find the you got to find the middle yeah. the happy medium of what's too much and then what's not enough and that's just over time you'll figure that out a little more my dad's pretty smart with all that though so he'll he'll guide me good but yeah the youtube channel right now just that has brought a lot of fans of the sport yeah yeah and i think um yeah, like having that team around you and, and coming into it as well, like you guys have known that th it was going to happen when you were going to bring a big crowd to the races. I think the sport knew, like, I mean, I'm sure Supercross has been pretty accommodating mm -hmm. with you guys, yeah. uh, like with Feld, because there's just a lot that kind of comes <laughs> with it. So, I mean, maybe that's just an advantage you guys have is that it's been a plan the whole time. And I mm -hmm. think for me, like before I knew you guys, one of the things that I would think from the outside in is like, man, he's having got a camera in his face all the time. Like, mm -hmm. you you see like so many ways that that can go wrong for a young kid. But then, after being around you guys and after knowing you guys, you see like, oh, you don't care anymore. <laughs> like, there's a camera around all the time, and you just don't care. Like, you're not putting on an act. You don't have to play a character. You don't have to be anything else. Like, you kind of just are so used to it at this point. You're just yourself, and then it's like, okay, I'll do this bit. You guys do everything else. Yeah, I mean, when I have the camera on, it's not even like I'm talking to a camera. It just, I don't know, yeah, it's so, it's so, much, like, the camera's always there, so I just always, it's just natural at this point. Since I was little, cameras have always been around. I grew up around the scene with cameras, you know, X Games, you have the camera on the family. It's just, I don't know, I just grew up with a camera, and it's like, <laughs> It's just, I mean, it's normal. I don't see anything different. Like, when the camera's off, I'm kind of the same. I mean, yeah. maybe a little more filtered when I'm on the camera. <laughs> but, uh, but besides that, though, that's it. I mean, but every, it's literally me on the camera. Like, my, me off the camera and on the camera is pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, and it's cool to, yeah, like, you definitely get that vibe just being around you for, you know, not even that long, and you're yeah. like, okay, yeah. It, and it look makes at the sense. interviews, right? People are like, man, your kid's such a good talker on camera. I'm like, yeah doing it since he was 10 dude yeah. you know like it's all part of this system the plan right like all the things working like according to the plan right and uh and that helps the sport right in the day like people connect to that you know if the if the guy's up there i'd like to thank my dunlop tires and my and my yamaha was hooking up and then we we're just having this great day and i'm like the crowd's like tune out yeah you know yeah but if dude's up there saying hey man you know i was freaking doing this yesterday and then <laughs> yeah. you saw it on my youtube channel and <laughs> yeah me and my brother were fighting and then we did this and that and then that, that and then bring you into the reality of life yeah people are like that's my connection that's the guy you know uh and i don't know when's the last time the sports had something like that literally who is the last people in supercross and motocross past McGrath because that was a long time ago that was like yeah. my era yeah. like past him who were the, the, the guys who built the sport yeah. who carried the sport yeah I, you know I can think Stuart Carmichael Chad Chad yeah uh, who else yeah who and, else and was I a people person that people came to see because they connected character yeah. wise not because they were fast yeah a lot of fast guys well I think that's the thing is it's always been built on race results yeah and that's why I think that you only ever mm -hmm. have like hardcore racing yeah. fans yeah. come because like that, that as level. a fan I want to see Ricky Carmichael race or yeah. I want to see James Stewart race yeah. but it's like if for the sport to reach that crazy wide appeal where it's like dude i just want to go see hayden deegan like i've never even been yeah. to a race but the kid's dope like he skates he scooters he yeah, freaking yeah. does foam pits he does, yeah. i do foam pits like i'm gonna go check this dude yeah, yeah. right I, yeah so I, I, but i think also you're winning races and championships yeah, yeah. so it's like to, it, i don't <laughs> yeah. think that there's been like the both is the thing that matters you know and i and i think jet I like that you know Jet was just in ESPN like yeah. the Justin Bieber of motocross should be like should perfect. be yeah. gosh you should be on on ESPN should be on Sports Center yeah like uh, when when we'd win X Games we were on Sports Center that night yeah you know uh, you know obviously because ESPN ran X yeah. Games yeah but 
that's where the sport needs to get. Yeah. These dudes need to be on primetime freaking sports channels. But like, football's there needs cool, to be, but it's like, dude, yeah, but come there needs on, to be who's going to bridge the gap? Gonna carry <laughs> characters, that. that's why yeah. we're not Yeah, it's nothing yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jet's a character, but, yeah. I mean, he's only, he doesn't, like, is he though? On um, he's not like he doesn't like he doesn't post anything for the fans to see. You know, he, yeah. he has his act at the race, but it's kind of hard for the fans to be in tune with his life. Who he who he really is, yeah. and and I get it. That like I think the Lawrence is great for the sport, right? They set the bar high. It's great for us because we're like, damn, okay, let's go. Yeah. We got a challenge, you yeah. know. Um, but I feel like there's two mentalities in racing. There's the guys who come and get theirs. Like we're coming, we're winning, we're gonna win that money, get all the sponsor money, get all the bonuses, boom, we're gonna kick ass, in, out, thanks guys. Like, that's cool, that's one way. A lot of, most racers do that, right? And then there's the other way of like, we're gonna let people into the, our lives, show them what's going on, and hopefully bring a bigger blanket of fans, which brings more money to the sport, to us, to everyone and grows the grows the machine right and that's where you're saying we need to start getting on prime time tvs uh, uh sports channels yeah. and be considering like some like ufc did ufc yeah. is the best sport in america right now it's the strongest they do the best press conferences their press conferences aren't like well i had a good race today and uh you know you passed me it was kind of aggressive but you know <laughs> like yeah, I, it said was that like, I, just... I was like fuck you dude like you this that i'm gonna beat your ass and like yeah. da -da -da, and they're like fighting over each other with the mic and like people are breaking them up and freaking dude everyone's turn tuning in and yeah. watching like Dude, Where is chicks it? watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my wife watches it. Yeah, yeah. She I, loves yeah, it. I sit there at the press yeah. conference and sometimes I'm just like, I want to like cook up and <laughs> say <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah, and then everyone just, yeah. I'm like, all right, dude. I'm. I guess I'll just lock in like this too. You yeah. need a yin and yang. You need yeah. someone that's like it willing in that press conference to talk shit back to yeah. you and be yeah. like, yeah, dude. Well, blah 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 blah. Yeah, and then it all, just if boom, you do talk you know? crap, they, it turns into a, a defense. They go into defense yeah, mode. I'm like, bro, come on. Yeah. Like not not marketing mode. No. <laughs> you know, like watch UFC if you want to see how it's done. Like well, and then well, people are like, "Well, that's cheesy. We're racers." How, well, you don't think fighters are fighters? You yeah. think they that's end up fake, hugging dude? after the fight most of the time. Yeah, hundred percent. They have to build the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't think McGregor's like is he is he the best fighter in the world? No, not right now. He probably was probably at one point, but he's still the highest paid dude. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because he's the best freaking shit talker, dude. He's yeah. he's the best. He knows how to market, and run the machine. He's got the most fans. There's something there, right? For sure. And man. if we want the sport to stay where it's at, then let's just keep doing the same thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think that, you know, at least, at least for me, right? Like, I have a level of, like, public facing. I talk shit for a living, yeah. basically. Yeah. And it's just like every single day, I'm just like pumping YouTube with more of, like, my opinions and my, like, it's kind of lame in my, but, but it's like, I have such a, I've divorced that on screen personality character like i'm trying to be as myself as yeah. possible right but not everyone's gonna like that not yeah. everyone likes me not yeah. everyone yeah. likes you guys no, no. i don't give a <laughs> fuck <laughs> no, you know but, but another like, thing is that's why mcgregor's so big it's because even the people that don't like him are still fans the, yeah like yeah. the people that don't yeah. like me they still they're still watching watch still they're clicking. still a fan they're yeah. still they're still <laughs> watching it the views equal money like it's still the views equal more fans like it's still all uh it's all a system. Yeah. It's like even if they don't like you or if they do like you, they're in tune to it. Yeah. It's like that's what like, that's what UFC and those guys are doing. And I like I think that the the trick is is to just know you're in that system and then not take it personally. Yeah. And you know I think yeah. we talked about yeah, it a bit yeah, before, yeah. but it's I, Steve, not even I think skin. Steve it's just does smart. a good job of that. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Steve, when you had your Washougal <laughs> podium speech, he went out and said. Like the thing that would have got him the most hate on the internet, and guess what happened? He got the most hate, on, and like yeah, yeah. he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's like, again, we're here. If yeah. you want to be a guy, and if that's a goal of yours, is like, hey, let's make this sport bigger. Let's put this shit on our back. Then you can't have hurt feelings. Like you can't have your feelings in this in the way. Like you can't be a dickhead and not care about the consequences. Yeah. But if, you know, people are going to talk the same yeah. way people don't like everything that I say or think that my podcast sucks. Like, mm. cool, dude, I bet you still watch the clips. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're watching the <laughs> clips and thinking about Moto yeah, yeah. and you're not going and watching something else yeah. right now, then, like, we're winning. The, the last time winning. I checked, you get paid on views, not likes. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> right? No, it's, you don't. So, like, well, there's the game, right? If people know the game. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I hear you. It's not even thick skin. Like, you're saying, like, when Mathis said what he said, it's, it was, it was, it was his way of finding a way to get clicks and views. And, hey, smart That's of what him. That's his job. Smart of him. Like, all right, dude. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have went that approach because that was, like, <laughs> deep, deep. Like, that was, like, you know, but uh, I get it. Like that's the game of, of the media and the internet, yeah. you know. In the end, I think we understand marketing and X Games was really about being a character, yeah. you know. And now we're back to racing. Racing's about winning too. So yeah. you always have. I think as long as you can <clears throat> perform on the track, you're good. Yeah, like, and that's why Connor got away with what he did. <clears throat> yeah, because he did whatever he wanted yeah. because he was winning every single thing. Yeah, it's like you write your, your own yeah. checks, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, it is. It is Talk what shit, it is. but they would never say it to him. Yeah, but he would still. He'd lose and he'd, he'd still, still don't win. talk shit in my DMs. And then, and then every, your wife's in my DMs or whatever, and, and that blows up. Yeah. And then now, even he, even though he lost, and maybe it would have been bigger if he would have won, mm. now he just said something, so now it's just as big as if he won. Yeah. Like, it's posted everywhere. People yeah. don't even care if he wins or loses anymore. No, they just want to hear what he says. They just want to yeah. hear. He's like such a good character, right? Well, I think, you know, you go back to that Steve thing, it's like, that helps you no matter what like he, he in a sense like at the lowest uh, like at face you go like he was talking shit mm -hmm. and then it's like okay but look how many fans that brought out look how many people that yeah. galvanized as like no fuck that yeah, yeah. i'm with yeah, hayden dig you know what I mean? yeah i mean it's yeah. funny he's the i what i didn't like is well i mean i was fine with what he said that's completely normal but then when you start backstepping that's when it's like bro <laughs> Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I don't ever say anything. I don't, I don't go on the podium and say Hunter Lawrence was nervous. And then I, the next day, I'm like, I write up a whole article on why I'm, I didn't say that. <laughs> why well, shouldn't have said it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you not even say shouldn't have said it, but trying to cover it up. There's two differences. There's one way to say, hey, man, I had a bad day. Sorry. I, I was wrong. That's one thing. That's respectful. Yeah. There's another way to backpedal it and try it, to yeah. cover it. Right? <laughs> that's, that's a different avenue, right? Um, but whatever. It's every, for every man his own. So. But I think, you know, the, the point of it is, is that like, that's a net positive for everyone. You yeah. Know? I mean, maybe not him for the, a little bit, like yeah. <laughs> he copped it pretty hard, but like, I think, yeah, you guys, it galvanizes a fan base to where it's like, nah, I'm pumped that, you know, that Hayden said what he did. And like, dude, I was there for that. And I'm yeah. as Australian as it gets. And that fired me up. Like I was, I was really like, you had such a great moment to go one, one. <laughs> The way that you went one one two, like I think, dominant. We'll talk yeah. about it maybe yeah. a bit further down, but like that's going to be. I think if you win four fifty championships and if you win, like when people start looking back on your career, like that's the day they're going to yeah. look at. I think. Yeah. And just to have the presence of mind to talk a little bit of shit, you know, and you don't get much time, dude. Yeah. Like, no, you literally get. <laughs> he gives you the microphone once. You probably have five seconds where he pulls it away. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. So like to maximize, like I just thought, yeah. I thought everything like the it played. <laughs> the race was brilliant. It you got the flag, up. and the crazy thing is too, like I mean, I, I, everyone was there, but like Jet had a Australian yeah. flag. Yeah, yeah, he had no yeah. shirt on. <laughs> Uh, which also fucking gangster. Yeah, cool. Like, that's yeah, dope, right on, you know. Dude. Yeah, As, these dudes are ripped. They're in shape. Yeah, ripped the shirt off. Yeah, cool, dude. Yeah. you know, bring more fans in. Dude, let for the, sure. Let the girls and the and even the dudes or whoever that freaking like that dude's freaking. Yeah. Like, All right, man, it's cool. Like that's what's attractive of the sport. And, and right? no like, one took offense to that. No. No one took offense to Jet. Having yeah. his, you That's know. the one thing I see you didn't do is rip your shirt off and throw it. In. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> thing that like, yeah. didn't happen, but. Like, either way, still to this day, you're going to be I'm proud to be American, stand yeah. behind everything there. Yeah. You think McGregor isn't a master of playing the mind games with his competition? Oh, for sure, dude. You don't think there's a game there, too? In motocross, you don't think there's a mind and, games? Right? And I think you played some games that won this year, too, <laughs> yeah, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know? exactly. You don't think... And, and it's good because when you are playing with high level players, yep. it's a chess match, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, the Lawrences or the whoever, the other guys we race against, there, there's a bunch of high level thinkers out there. I think that's what it takes to be a champion, is a high level thinker. But there is yeah. times where, like, I, I, I'll talk to people and I'll like, play the mind game with them. And then when I'm behind them at a race and they tip over, I'm like, 
But I win. It work. You know, might, <laughs> that might have been because I said this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you never know. And that's what I think. I mean, you got to always be playing all the cards. Yeah. And have, have those have those open for when you go yeah. race. And have if you're in their head, then you're in their head. Yeah. Yeah, you guys don't see half the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Oh, man. Like the things with the ride. Like, hey, man. Like, <clears throat> I've heard Aiden go, hey, man, where were you in practice? Where were you, dude? Like, where's the speed? Where were you? Like, and it's just like little like, yeah. and it was a laugh and a hit, like, ha, ha, but it yeah. it's shit. just a little like, da, 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 you know, and it's the competition, dude. It's yeah. the way a game works, right? Like, it's like when people fight or where's the punch, dude? What happened? You know, like people like, that's just what happens. They, they get the uh, emotions, draw off emotions, you know? Oh man, and it's it's so real, like just the art of war, you yeah. know. Like there's so much in, in that, and I think it's one of the cool things I think seeing with you this year is just like a level of competition. Like you're, if you ever watch like Hard Knocks or anything on the NFL, the the big thing that you hear in those those documentaries and when you're around like the Patriots or the Chiefs or any of those guys. It's like, we just show up every day and we compete. We compete and we win. And it's like every scrimmage, every single time that the ball leaves yeah. the hand, it's like, we're, we're competing. Practice, gym, yeah. every, and like that stuff gets really hard to deal with. And I think that the we're kind of like st- seeing this new evolution of the sport in a sense with the star, the farm now. Yeah. Like you're living out there full time. Like since you signed with the team after Minio's last year, like you've just been in that program and i think that you're one of the rare people that is competitive to every moto to every you know being out there first being the first guy like for me one of my things is like it's just waking up early i like to be if whatever house i'm in i like to wake up early i don't like i'm next to my wife i'm not trying to beat my wife and shit but it's like i look at that as a small win for the day and it's like there's competition everywhere mm-hmm. if you're looking for it and i think you're one of those gnarly little asshole kids yeah. <laughs> that's like, how i grew up yeah. i grew up in school i don't even i didn't care if it was the answer was right as long as i had the paper to the lady first <laughs> i i my day was complete i sat back down and you know sat there while everyone was working so i was like i just finished that first and that's just how it was at school you know we did the running race or whatever it was i i had to be first like it was no i had no other choice like if mm-hmm. i wasn't first then Frick, maybe this girl didn't like me that day because I didn't turn my paper in first. <laughs> so I was like, I always had to be first. And then my family, they always had to be first. So it was just like a family thing. We got to be first. So when I go anywhere, anything I do, like, it's just, it's always, a, it's always kind of a race. Yeah. Like, even in the gym, you know, I'm like, I mean, not say finish first because you can't really do that in the gym, but like. But there's a way you can win. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can visibly win things yeah. when you do it. And it, like, I mean, for, I think for the average person, it gets tiring, but. <laughs> There's, you're not the average it's person. It's just natural. You know? yeah. Like you yeah. just, that's what you only want to do. You may not always do it, but that's kind of what I always want to do. And is that so? Then moving to the star farm, and you've got all those guys are training every day. And it's it funny. Like I'd watch your videos from the goat farm, a for just riding technique stuff, and b I feel like it could give me a real good look because you guys post raw motos basically. And it's like, you see where they start and then you see who passes who and you see who's finished and you like, you can, in that content, there's quite a lot of tell about who's doing what. And it, it definitely seems like you're one of those gnarly dudes that it's just every moto you're passing people and you're like, you're trying to break even your teammates every day. Yeah, that's how it is. And like, sometimes I'll have a drill or something to do and they set me out front where I can't go as fast because I don't have my rear brake or something and then I get passed by someone. I'm like, no, I cannot do that. <laughs> like I'm giving these dudes confidence. Yeah. I don't know, every time I go out, it's gotta be a race and I gotta try and beat you. I don't know, that's just like, I want like my goal, like even, I mean, I get that my teammates and stuff, but again, it's, I gotta race you. Like it's still another guy I gotta go out there and race and if I'm giving them con- confidence even on practice day, it's not what I want to be doing. That's not like I want to be able to make sure you want to give your teammates confidence and stuff for them to go race. But like I'm gonna try and pass you in practice, you know, so you know at the race if I'm behind you that you can't beat me. That's and I think we could see that happen sometimes this year, you know. Like I think Hangtown was the first one where it was that was the day at the goat farm. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like I think that Bobby Reagan's an animal to mm-hmm. like it would be. I mean, maybe you could speak on this a bit more. Like, I, I envision a lot of, like, 
tension there at times because it is so cutthroat, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you've got this dude, Bobby Reagan, Mm -hmm. that owns the most badass team. He's got this crazy facility. Like, it's an NFL tight facility yeah. except you guys aren't on the same you're on the same team but you're also it's an individual sport so yeah. it's like a very very unique dynamic yeah. and i'm sure it would be pretty intense at times it does even even with the guys sometimes it gets a little intense <laughs> out there <laughs> oh, dude, but i, I mean bet. it's like dude you're literally we have so many guys on our team it's like you could be racing the top, like, me, it was literally uh, the last moto, what was it? Yeah. Levi, me. And Cooper, jo- right? Cooper. Yeah. Like, yeah. we were on the top, we we're, t- were top three. And then you practice with those guys every day. Yeah. So you want to make sure they know, one, that you can try and break their, con- like, you can break them at a race, try and pass them. Like, and you want to be able to ride with them clean at the practice track. Yeah. And not give them too much confidence. It's such a, you got to play the game so hard, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I think it sets it sets you guys up though you know for like for a lot of success and it's a it's definitely like a ballsy play from bobby's behalf and it's like his way on the highway too you know like you can't Mm -hmm. you can't opt out of that program and i think even seeing levi leave Mm -hmm. to pro so like hey when have we ever seen a guy like leave star Star (laughs) yamaha you know so it's like that's to me is like this system isn't for me like it's too much yeah it's you gotta be tough. That's all I'm gonna say. He's gotta be tough to be on that program, and it's it ain't it ain't easy. Yeah. Did you yeah. expect that when you, well, I guess, throwing him into the wolves like I, that? I always like see, tougher the better. To be honest, like I we we're always tough on Hayden. <laughs> like everything we did was like to the max, right? You know, everything. It's uh, so I was just hoping to be tough enough. To be honest, you know, <laughs> like really. I mean, we. Like I said, I think we highly underestimated our preparation for, with uh, getting ready to race pro, you know? Really? I, you guys didn't think you nailed it? Well, no, I thought I over... I don't want to be disrespectful, but I think we overestimated. Like, I just looked at some of the top guys. I'm like, man, if one day we could just beat those guys. And I didn't expect it to happen that quick in this season. Yeah, right? oh, so you guys thought that you would be worse than you were. We just thought, I just thought, like, I remember talking before the season started outdoors. We're like, dude, if we can get one podium outdoors, it'd be sick. That's so yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. I know, and, but in, in my head, I was like, oh, I think I'm he gonna probably win. knew. <laughs> I'm like, in my head, I like, in my head, yeah. I was grew up to be a winner. Yeah. I won amateurs, and in my head, I'm like, when I'm out there on the track and I'm in fifth place, I feel so uncomfortable. Like, I, I, I got to get to the lead. Like, I got to get to the lead. And, I mean, I don't feel, unco- like, uncomfortable where I can't ride right. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Like, I, like, it's only natural to be up front battling with the lead or battling up front the, the, on the podium spot. It's just, I don't know. When I was coming into the pro ranks that first full Supergrass season, I mean, I knew Supergrass was going to be harder than outdoors. And uh, I think people were, like, thought, like, oh, he's going to be way better in Supercross because he grew up on it. And then outdoors, I think he's going to struggle. Which, I mean, I came into Supercross with, like, this might take a little longer. You got the whoops, you got the peaky rhythms, you gotta have some, you gotta have that quick reaction time. It might take me a little bit to get going. And what, when did I, I don't remember what round Daytona was. I was, uh, and about halfway through, I got my first podium. Yeah. And then uh, ticked off another two podiums, and I was like, all right, we have podiums now, now we need to win. Like, yeah. now I know I can run up front. There's no reason why I can't go in. We had, what is it, I think two weeks to get ready for outdoors, was it two weeks? If that. You literally have two weeks or something, if that, to get ready mm-hmm. for outdoors. And it was Fox Raceway. And I was like, I was like, I got it. I mean, I know I can do it. They had, I mean, outdoors is east and west coast together. One, you have double the competition. I was just racing at Supercross. But I was like, you grew up racing outdoors. You grew up, you're raised to be a winner. And you need Paolo to go is there. your backyard as well. Yeah, exactly. But everyone else is too. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Every guy, yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah. Paul's backyard right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. came down to Temecula yeah, yeah. in this yeah. area because I mean it's the pinnacle of this the sport right now. It's kind of moving out though. It's going to Florida now. <laughs> yeah. It's But most of the team, you got Pro Circuit, you had Star, you had, uh, I mean shoot, Honda was down here at one point. Like you had all of them down here. Yeah. So it was kind of like the spot. But yeah, just back to the winning thing, and it was like, I got to get a win like soon. You know, I haven't won in a while. And I was like, I gotta get that. I gotta, I gotta get that itch back out of the way. And then I did it. So we got it done at Red Bud. But it was still that one. That one was a win, but it felt incomplete. Like I didn't do a. For, I didn't win a moto. Yeah. Like it was. Uh, it was not. It, I want to say given to me because uh, just the situa- the situation. It's a like it's racing. 
so nothing's really given in racing. But uh, I think, think with Hunter going down too, probably felt a bit. Yeah, like I, you would have felt a bit like you'd want to want to beat him. No, it's, up. exactly. Yeah, I wanted to beat Hunter. That's that was my thing. And I mean, it's obvious. I'm a rookie coming in, and Hunter's the guy to win. I, I mean, I'll say it straight up. I just wanted to beat Hunter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, Shugel, uh, he was behind me, and then I was like, I just started getting going. He fell, and I was like, damn it. Like I wanted to do, you know, one of those little freaking try and break away from Hunter, and uh, and, and then uh, and then I think he got back up and like kind of got back up to us, and then I kind of like lit up in that first moto, like kinda, and I got you know won the first moto, and then second moto is where I felt really good. Yeah. It was weird, like I like ticked, like halfway through, I was like I just started going, like finding good lines, flowing the track super gnarly, and uh, I remember I was hitting the jump, I see Hunter just further, 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 and I was like. This is sick. <laughs> this like this is, is the, the first time where I was like, dude, I'm like I'm doing it. You know, like I'm going. And uh, that was just, you know, much respect for Hunter because he's obviously super good. He's won his championships. But like again, that was just like it was almost like a dream come true for me in the pro ranks to like get in the first and then just start seeing the guys that I dreamed of beating just go back. And then I mean, obviously there's races where he's beat me straight up multiple times. He's that's that's just Hunter's good, and I got a lot to learn still to get to that point where I dominate. But again, that was like a dream come true to just leave those guys. Dude, uh, I was standing right at the whoop section yeah. at Washougal, and we actually spoke about it, but like after practice, where I was like, I think inside two, three, three, <laughs> and then out is going to be good. And there was literally, uh, it was halfway through. You just come through and you nailed, like you weren't nailing those, but no one really was yeah, like yeah. in that second motor. <laughs> and then you just nailed that line through the whoops and it was like, yeah, like, exactly. Later. It was just it's like a second or two seconds a lap. Crazy. And, and, and you did it the first moto a few times. Yeah. You? And in the second moto it was super slick. They watered it. Well, it, was, yeah. it was like a roll two, three, four yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Everyone and, knew about it. That's the thing. It wasn't like second moto where Hayden figured it out. Everyone no, knew what you were supposed was, to do. They just they didn't do it. Couldn't do it. Yeah. You gotta have bikes still. <laughs> I, I, think, I think a lot of that comes from those little jumps like that. I rode BMX a lot. Like I went to the skate park. I rode with all the good BMXers like they they you know all the tricks all the massive hits we did like it's just like I don't know that bike skill you learned on a BMX bike and then you got these doubles triples you got to like fit the bike into them it's like you know, it's almost comes from BMX riding the pump track hitting dirt jumps in my backyard on BMX riding skate parks you got to hit the little transitions over here and there and it's just learning from all different aspects where it's not just dirt bikes you know you got to take parts from what you've grew up doing as well that, yeah, uh, and so I touch on that <clears throat> before I forget. That's why I'll cut you off, otherwise I'll forget what I'm yeah, going to yeah. say. But uh, that foundation we built with Hayden coming up with all that is, is real, well-rounded, right? There's little things we, we missed and we need to work on, right, that I still need to get. But what do you do at this point? Just go down the, the training facility road and just pound motos, mm. hit the lap times, scrimmage, scrimmage, scrimmage. Uh, or do you go, ah, what worked for us? Yeah. All the all the other stuff, you know, hitting ramps, doing BMX, doing this, doing that, still doing the motos, but adding in all this other stuff, is this gonna be the next form of athlete that is able to surpass the top guy who, who has set the standard right now? Obviously, Jet has set the new level, right? As far as what I see, uh, he set this new level. Will Tomac be able to beat him? I don't know, I'm not sure, we'll see. But like I was saying, Jet obviously stepped up the program. Okay, so what's it going to take to step up above him? You know, so we got to think about this. Yeah, and we have a few years to think about it, right? Because you know, right? He's going to be in the lights class for a while. But my point is, what is it? Yeah, I don't think it's just pounding laps on the stopwatch. Yeah, at, at the training facility, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Well, Not I sure. think. Yeah, I think with mm. with you, from what I can see from the outside, is. You're one of these kids where if you didn't do dirt bikes, you could be like a Travis Pastrana. Like, I actually think you've got the Travis gene to where, like, I'll go do a double gainer oh, off yeah. that cliff. Like, yeah, yeah. and you'll be like, fuck yeah, I'll do that. I used to and, be so unsafe when I was a kid. Like, I would do anything. Yeah, yeah. I think now, though, I'm, a, I'm more safe just because of the racing aspect. I gotta like, make sure I don't get hurt. But, like, dude, when I was a kid, I 
backed up to 65 at 10 years old. Like, yeah. I, would, I just would do it. People anything. forget that. Yeah. That's really gnarly. It's really gnarly. Like, you yeah. have to be kind of a yeah. fucked up kid to yeah. do that. Look you at know? your 10 year old kid right now and picture him backflipping a dirt bike. Would he do it? Would and you like let a, him do it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and a legitimate, a legitimate dirt bike. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm a little nervous. I'm, it's all right. And then, but yeah. That. <laughs> but yeah, I think that there's not many, like, I think that's what made Travis really special. Mm-hmm. I think that there's like a level of, like, I mean, I don't know, like, it, you'd, you'd have to get inside your mind, but there's just a level of, like, just not caring in a sense where you can just. I think it's calculated risk, you know, and I think that because you think about what is it really? Is it just are are you just crazier? Do you care less about getting hurt? I no, think Travis, and I don't think that's it. I think Travis explained it best when we've had conversations about it. Like, why are we the ones on the rolling at X Games? And when you look up in the crowd of fifty thousands watching you, why is there ten of us and fifty thousand of them? What is it? And, and uh, so, is it w- the willing to work hard? The willing to take risks? It's like, I think it's a way to, your mind is able to calculate risk and you just have a, have a way of doing it to where in my mind, I think I can do that. Like in my way, I'm calculating this. I think I have a chance of pulling this yeah. off where you in your mind can't calculate it. You know, where Travis is like, oh, I'm going to jump roof to roof. I'm going to do this. I'm going to flip from this building to this building. And to us, we're like, bro, that's <laughs> gnarly. Like my mind can't calculate that. Yeah, your yeah. mind can. Yeah. And I think that's what certain minds can do. And that's why I feel like when you have these extraordinary minds that can want to be challenged you have to keep challenging them yeah and and, uh there's something there and i'm still going down that path of how to keep it interesting everyone's like we got to keep it fun you got to keep it challenging that's what's fun to these type of minds yeah you know so that's kind of the game you know that's why i still like trying to figure out what is the, the path that keeps this momentum going this not this yeah like he just keeps what is that because yeah. right now he went to star wow star was like okay our pros are here wow okay i went now i'm the fastest guy what's next yeah you know it's like so okay what are we doing you know that's kind of where i'm at and um and i don't know you know i gotta think about that but for what he's doing right now it's like he can win what he's doing but like what is it yeah i, know, I just like think about that stuff sometimes you know what is the challenge what is that keeps you wake up in the morning going fuck dude or that or today when i woke up in the morning you know, that day i was gonna backflip my dirt bike i freaking felt alive yeah. i was like fuck today's the day i ain't backing out i'm doing it i think a lot of i think a lot of the i think a lot of the thing that gets you up to want to do even even if you're not doing anything fun for the day you're just cranking out some hot hard motos because i am be honest that's not always fun yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. grind it's that's the sport you gotta yeah. grind your stuff out but I think what gets me up in the morning is what I have written on my goal list. So when I walk out the thing, like I read those and that's what kind of keeps, that's where I'm like, all right, we have an unfinished job. Like we gotta get, the, we gotta go get this. Like I had my goal, win, just win super motocross, the championship. And I just, every morning, I, I literally, I could you not, every day I said it a hundred times in my head. I will win super motocross. I will, win, like I will win it. And we won it. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I, I think it's very, impressive the way that i mean i think the first time we did the podcast you were doing the 125 supercross thing and then even then it was like it's 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 cool to watch a kid right because like we were young like i'm 35 so i feel like i call you a kid still but it's like to watch a kid saying things like you were saying things in the podcast that you should say if you want to be a champion but it's like, it's easy to say those things, right? <laughs> but then it's like, it gets very obvious that you're a person that says those things and then does those things. And it's like, to you grew up in a crazy, like, I hate the word, but like privileged environment, you know? Like you're born, you got a famous father, you're in a fucking multi-million dollar winery <laughs> yeah so you should think you i should, should think just go lay back chilling, bro. go lay back on my pool yeah. and then go inside and play video games with my brother lay back on the pool i'll go ride my bmx bike here and there but i watch my dad and see what he's done and i'm like i want to be like that too i want to set my own path i want to amaze people i want to you know impress myself i want to you know win championships i want to make my own money a lot of money like he did it's like you see what your dad did and you could be the kid that just goes and lays back or you could be the kid that just wants something really bad. And I feel like, again, and you know, that's a parent thing also, like 
he didn't just let me mm. take the easy route. I'm sure, I mean, I was growing up to be a racer, and but there is a way this he could have just let me take an easy route and be a normal kid, go to school, come home, and be spoiled. And But he chose a different route. He wanted me to have a career, you know? He, he set me up in the right path to be a champion, and that's what I think that's different than just being a spoiled kid and privileged compared to me. You know, we're spoiled. You know, he bought me dirt bikes when I was younger. I had the best 65. I had the best 85. That's a that's another story. But, like, he wanted me to be a champion, and he raised me that way. And I feel like you gotta you got to have the two parts to it where it's like you have a kid that wants to be a champion, and then you have a kid that just wants to chill. But he raised me to be a champion. I feel like you're either going to make it or not by the time. When you're on Super Mini, you kind of know, like, this kid's going to make it or he's yeah. not. You know, like, uh, and and that's when I was like, dude, let's go. It's like, it's time. We got to freaking start, you know, rolling Supercross, going everywhere to get the comp <clears throat> competition, going to Club MX, spending time there. And um, anyway, so we turned the switch up, and then that was the last couple of years of Super Mini, 125. Yeah. And then, okay, let's go tour the teams. Let's go see which team we want to race for. Because we get to choose. We, yeah. don't, it's, we have a choice, you know, which is pretty cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we went and toured all the teams, all the facilities, and, and I, we already had that conversation. You know, I, I don't think we said it last time because I couldn't, but yeah. <laughs> we, we picked Star Yamaha because it fit our gritty style, Yeah. right? If it, if it were like, yeah, if I want to jump on the dozer and build a double right here, go ahead. Yeah. yeah I could. Baker ain't gonna let me do that. I promise you that. <laughs> like he ain't gonna let me cruise across his grass yeah. and start building jumps. Like yeah. whatever, it's his deal. Like our deal is gritty, and, and I feel like Star was like, whatever it takes to win, we'll do it. I said, okay, you're the right team. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. yeah. Like if you want, if we want the engine to be more bottom end, or we want the suspension to be this way or this way, can we do it? Yeah, for sure. We'll have our techs there. Every time you ride, there's ten techs on the track. Yeah. And I'm like. Let's do it. That's how Bobby is. Though. Yeah. I probably shouldn't really say it, but uh, when we're, at, we're in the semi, he's like, do whatever you can to win. And if anyone has a problem out there or if someone gets mad, then come talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what a good his team saying is throw yeah. me under the bus. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah. And I'm as like, long as you figure out how to win <laughs> and then someone gets mad with you doing it, they come talk to me. Yeah, I'll do the rest. Yeah, I'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah. That's some Belichick shit right yeah. there. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. that's a. That, I mean, yeah. it, it happened at freaking Thunder Valley uh -huh. when I, uh, me and Hunter were battling. They got, uh, they got mad and they came <laughs> talk to Bobby. Oh, oh yeah. Bobby handled it yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Just played the fifth, go straight yeah, to Bobby. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there in that conversation. I usually sit back. What were they pissed about? When I was riding Hunter Dirty. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was freaking, I couldn't ride that. Like, my my bike set wasn't right there, so I was like, did not have speed. You struggled till Washougal, or like, yeah. till a bit before, right? Yeah, we were, we were trying some new stuff. We were trying to find that niche on the bike. And we found it at Washougal, I'll tell you that. But before <laughs> that, we were struggling with it. So we yeah. finally got a setup at Washougal, but before that, we were kept going and back and forth trying to find something that, you know, just, because I was, at the beginning of the season, my bike was good, but we needed more out of it. So we kept making big changes, and then, yeah, at Thunder Valley, it was wasn't the move yeah so the suspension setup just wasn't set up right for his style yeah uh the first half of the season yeah and we were searching searching and then finally found something in the yeah. middle of the season that was a good balanced bike and then let him do the rest yeah instead of us trying to trick this trick that okay we got speed here speed that it was just like neutral platform yeah let you do the work yeah and then it's boom there yeah. we go you know so i want to go back to the saying I'm going to win SMX a hundred times. Like that was the thing when I very first spoke to you that I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Like you, it was, you look like the kind of kid that was midway through reading your 10th self-help book, you know? And it's like, you were sticking to that. Like I, for me, man, I had some books that like fully changed my life. Like just completely. One of the cool things I like about books is once you read something, that's like a way better idea than you've ever had in your head you just own that idea now. Like you can't unlearn that, that thing, you know? Yeah. It's like the Atomic Habits was one for me where it was like, yeah. if you get 1% better at something every single day, you'll be 37 times better at that thing by the end of the year. Yeah. And then once you learn yeah. that, once you apply it and do it, then you're like, damn, I can do this to anything in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, what were the things like, obviously you've got your dad but it, it seemed like there was more that you were doing yourself to like learn that mindset shit 
Yeah, it was, uh, I watched a lot of David Goggins. It's, I mean, he's, if you watch that dude, he's the baddest dude alive. Like, he is he's gnarly. <laughs> and I just, I feel like you find these guys that you kind of are influenced by that kind of give you these thoughts. Like, in my races, I'll be like 30 minutes in or whatever, and if I feel like something, something I feel tired or I feel something's wrong, I'm like, you're so soft, dude. It's 30 minutes. You're like, and I'll be like, you're a baby. And I get in my head crazy and I just keep going. And that's what I got to do. And that's what, you know, like, that's what, uh, that's what, uh, yeah, I watch Goggins a lot. He's freaking 200 miles with broken feet. I'm like, I'm crying about 30 minutes. Like, Death Valley. I'm, I got to be a man right now. Like, I got, uh, so I go into the David Goggins aspect and I just start thinking, like, what would he do right now? He wouldn't, he wouldn't complain. You got to be a man. You got to be tough. You got to fight through this. You got to be strong. And uh, that's what I kind of think. And sometimes I'll be like hanging on for dear life, like in that first moto at freaking uh, LA Coliseum. Like, I don't know if it was the nerves or something, but I got the worst arm pump and I was like oh, hanging really? on and like, I'm in my head just reciting David Goggins in my head. I'm like, come on, stay hard, come on, come <laughs> on, dude. And I was like, come on. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I made it through the moto without getting passed one more time. So, and we ended up getting it done, you know? I went in the semi, I just sat there and just, kept reciting I, I will win this I will win this I will win this and uh yeah David Goggins on the line just thinking of it thinking of it and got it done <laughs> it's got to be weird sitting in the in the room because they all sit in their little table like in a debrief after the moto with the guys you have to beat yeah <laughs> it's so weird you see the guy weird, that weird, bro, you see it's you know? crazy yeah. going and then Jordan man. Smith sitting there just like but he's all I've got a million dollars or half a million right you know you can see it you see his wheels turning the and you've been in that and position like, because ah, you, like I you've had it. x games yeah. like you would have seen that yeah. shit you know yeah. Like, yeah. you'd know more than most. Yeah, and I sit and watch. Like, I was there the night that him and Smitty got into it at Supercross. And, like, I, I sit back and watch it all. I just, like, I pay attention, just kind of, like, see how people react. And, like, you know, and just kind of, it's kind of interesting to me, you know. And um, anyway, they, they're in that room after the first moto. And there's, like, there's the dude. Like, that's yeah. your competition, right? Yeah, except Shimoda. Yeah, like, and they just knew they had to all beat Shimoda, right? And to be honest, they're really, people think there's team tactics and team orders. There's Every fucking man is for himself. That's it. Every dude in that truck wants to win that half million dollars. They don't ain't trying to help him. No. They want the fucking 17 year old kid to come in and win the fucking Supercross. Come on, dude. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> hell no. Like, you, you'd have to be like, hey, you can have half my prize money if you help me. That'd probably be the way it'd have to happen. Like, but it just doesn't. You, you still know? get it done yourself. And they still ain't gonna do it. They like, dude, they don't want to see. They don't want to. They want themselves to win. Oh, and everything. It. it just yeah. builds. Like everything yeah. builds onto every other thing. Like yeah. you finished the race yeah. at the last national, and then that leads you into Super Motocross, and then that leads you into the off yeah. season, and then it's just it never yeah. ever stops. Like you, it's like what you said before. Like you can never let people win in this game. Yeah, that's why I told him, don't let Shimoda get momentum, dude. That last fucking national. He did, man. like from the whole from sick. Iron Man. He was sick as a dog. And I'm like, fuck, dude, this last race, and we need to win. Like, we just need to end it like a freaking dude. Like, yeah. you're done, you know? Like, but as a gist, he's just sick enough to give Shimoda a little, like, yeah. And I'm like, I remember, like you're 15, just catching 15 him, 15 minutes in the first moto, I was, like, catching Shimoda, and my body was, like, so fatigued. I mean, I got super sick, and, uh, like, it was one of those days where it's like, dude, it's your body, you feel drowsy, you feel yeah. weak, like, you don't want to, like, move much, and... I was like 15 minutes in, I was so tired. I was like, damn, dude, like I'm trying to catch him and I just had to back it down. I was like, I, I can't. Like I just physically, my body's like not able to do it. And trust me, I was running some David Goggins through my head again. <laughs> but dude, I, that was to a point where I was like, I was just it's trying my hardest too. to hold hot, off Vial. Yeah. Like I was gonna hold off Vial. That was my goal, to hold off Vial. Yeah. That's where I was at. And uh, I mean, I hadn't pulled him off. And then second moto, same thing. Just got to fight till the end, stay strong. But I just, I, I didn't have it in me to catch the moto. That's just my body wasn't able to, so. Yeah, but uh, your speed, the first moto, I'm like, oh, here we go. Know, he's going to pull something out of his ass. But I was like, there's no way. There's no way he's beating these dudes today at that sick. I'm like, there's no way. He could barely stay awake in the hall. He's just falling, like sleeping all day and he no. never sleeps. He didn't take a nap to save his life. Yeah. I, I can't sleep. Ever. I have so much energy. I have like, <laughs> 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 never stay, <laughs> never took a nap once. Yeah, I'm not a nap. And he's day, sleeping right? in the motorhome. Like, I'm like, shit. You're like, yeah, he's cool. Fuck. Like, and you were still yeah. sending that, that uh, thing. Yeah, and second moto, I'm like, we're done. Starting the second moto, done. He's so tired, right? And I was like, fuck, it's hot. 
you're gonna get smoked this second moto and uh Fucking dude, held in there. I ended up second, I think, or yeah, something. I got second. I got. I went what two, yeah. three, two, two. Yeah, I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, that's fucking good for how sick you were, you know. Yeah. Um, but it did give Shimoto a little like, like for oh sure, here we man. go, crazy, you know? crazy confidence, and yeah. then he took that into that whole in playoff super, yeah. series, you know. Yeah. And then that cer- first round was where uh, Charlotte. I won the first moto. Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah, you won the first moto, and, and the I was, second moto, wasn't... something happened. Second moto, I forget. Yeah, I crashed in the qualifying. Like, hit, crashed hit. early, yeah, in the day. You ate shit. Yeah. Back. Oh, that was a, yeah, that was a big hit. The get hit, and it rang his bell. <laughs> we kind of just didn't say nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we were just kind of like, eh. I mean, we, 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 got, we got out. checked. We got checked out, and they're like, yeah. you don't have a concussion, so we're like, yeah, you're good. They but made, I, it, yeah, I, made. you know, when you ring your bell, you're a little, uh, yeah, little it's like not... that. Even though you didn't have a concussion, I still like rung my bell pretty good, and uh, but yeah, first moto was solid. And then second moto, I was just feeling the effects from that, but I can't have an excuse, so. Came into the next one, what was it, Chicago? Chicago, it was and a straight out Yeah, and track. I did not have the, I, I didn't have the speed really. No, you were sick again, you got strep oh, throat. Oh, I got strep throat. throat. Yeah, I, I heard got you were sick throat. Throat. Yeah, that weekend, I, guess, I could show you pictures of it, you'd laugh. It was not. Oh my God. <laughs> he showed me his throat on Thursday before a fly. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with <laughs> dude, this, dude? it looked like my throat was shut. It, like, and the just, hole was oh, like dude. this, his breathing hole was, it like, was not, shut. I raced with a gnarly, I'm, and I'm like, fuck. If the, fa- if, <laughs> see, if the people behind the yeah. scenes that want to talk knew exactly what I had before a lot of these races, yeah. they'd yeah. be like, damn. So we call, which I don't like to do, get the antibiotics, get the Z-Packs, get, you know, like we have to do something yeah. that's sick, dude. And uh, and because he, he woke up coughing, weak, and I'm like, fuck, it's a bacteria infection in your throat, you know? And I'm like, okay, here we go. And on a Z-Pack, which instantly kills your energy, right? Yeah. It's facts, data, it says it, you know? And, and I was like, ah, we got to do it. So he did it, and then we went into Chicago. That was a gnarly race, too, real rough. They didn't yeah, touch that was the track. pretty wild. They went, didn't prep the track at all. There's a lot I could go in about that, which I won't. But uh, he he struggled at that one. I, and I whole shot of the first one and led almost the whole thing until like the end. And I was just, dude, again, tired. Yeah, he had, couldn't fight all the way through it. And then, uh, but somehow salvaged enough points again to still be in the fight. You know, which by the time, cr- by time yeah. we left there, I'm like, fuck, we're still in the fight. Like, Okay, let's get a week and get healthy. Yeah, I just took let's that week. Let's not worry about riding. Let's worry about getting yeah. healthy because that's what's going to be help you win. If you can show up like, oh, I'm ready. Well, good. We don't need to try to ride. Like, you know how to ride. Yeah, yeah, ride, the right? riding. We need can, to get healthy. Yeah. That's, what we, that's what we kind of looked back to is it's always we got to keep pounding laps. We're like, dude, I know how to ride a bike. I have good fitness. Let's get our body back to 100%. Mm-hmm. And then we did. And, uh, even though I got freaking all tight in that first moto, my body was back to where it was supposed to be. Like, but I could how race. good could it have been? You're sick like five days before on Z Pack, and the yeah. Z Pack didn't end till Tuesday, Wednesday that week. It's still in your system for a couple weeks. Like, was he really 100 percent that last round? Yeah. You know, he was good, but was he really 100 percent? You know, so that whole super motocross thing was a struggle. It was dude. just might have been the out. end of the season, long season. I don't think training. everyone like everyone you can just see wore it. Yeah. out and yeah. tired. And he was winning or battling for wins the whole whole year, which Shimoda wasn't. Yeah. Shimoda didn't come on till the end, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's, a, that's a good I, point. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe he was dealing with shit too. I'm sure everyone is, like at the end of the day. But <laughs> it was a freaking gnarly. Like I think about this stuff. I'm like, you think of F1, top level of racing, and you think of NFL, top level sport. They have coaches. They have mental coaches. They have uh, trainers. They have nutritionists. Like, if, if, if this was correct, Hayden would have a nutritionist going, here's your meals. Yeah. Here's your vitamins. Do you guys Oh, you feel that? sick? We're going here. No. No one does in our sport, really. I mean, do they? Like, you know? No, I don't know. Do they? I, maybe they do. I don't think they do. Like, I'm just saying there's many more levels I think we can still go, which is exciting. Because yeah. I'm like, I think we can get way better still. That, yeah, that's yeah. a good part yeah. is knowing you're not maxed out. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's I'm, sem- I'm 17. I'm, I trust me, I'm still growing. I have a lot to grow into my body. I have a lot to add to the program. Yeah. I have a lot to adjust with the program. Like, it's not like we're at a spot where I'm 28 you're years old. Searching. No, I'm 28 years old, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just keep bouncing energy. around. Yeah. And not knowing, like, I, I don't have guidance. Like, I don't know, but my dad, we have guidance. I have a good dad, I have good guidance in my family, where it's like, we know what to do. You know, yeah. it's not just gonna be a thing where it's like, we're lost.
Yeah, Yama ain't paying for a private jet. Well, uh, motocross nation starts in like six hours, man, and uh, you're in Temecula. <laughs> shit, dude. Futures, you were shit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that was bad. Like, that was crazy. <laughs> that was a me. lot of pressure.